May 2010. Kingston, Jamaica would erupt with violence. A major drug lord just had a warrant placed on him by the U.S. government and was refusing to be taken into custody. Government forces would storm the neighborhood of Tivoli Gardens in West Kingston. The clashes would leave over 70 people dead. Christopher Koch was the leader of the largest drug organization in Jamaica, and his shower posse gang was going to protect him at all costs. In the end, Koch knew there was no way to stop the Jamaican government from taking him into custody. Due to the reputation of Jamaican prisons, he feared he would be murdered once he surrendered, so he came up with a different plan. Koch would try to surrender at the U.S. Embassy, skipping the Jamaican prisons altogether, but he would be captured at a roadblock. Koch's father, Lester, was killed in a mysterious fire in a Jamaican prison in 1992. Not long after his arrest, Christopher knew he would likely face the same fate as rival gangs would try to take out the leader of the shower posse. Koch would waive all extradition hearings and hurriedly made his exit to the US where he was convicted of drug and weapons trafficking charges. He received a 23-year sentence and is currently incarcerated at Federal Correctional Institution Fort Dix. The takeaway from this is that Koch believed that a long federal prison sentence in the U.S. was better than taking his chances in Jamaican prisons. For some Americans, Jamaica is known for its Rastafarian culture and reggae music, along with its tropical beaches and resort areas, such as Montego Bay. But there is another side to Jamaica, with crime and suffering. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean, by area. It has over 2.8 million people. The island was under the control of the British government from 1655 to 1962. Jamaica is commonly referred to as the Rock or Jam Rock by inhabitants. The country is heavily dependent on tourism with 4.2 million visitors a year. We'll see in a bit how these tourists face incarceration in Jamaica. The crime rate in Jamaica is one of the highest in the world, with the number of murders particularly unsettling. In 2021, there was 1,464 murders. Per the United Nations, the murder rate in 2020 was 44.7 per 100,000 people. Comparatively, the US murder rate is 6.4 per 100,000. If you think it's violent in the US, the research to crime stats for Jamaica, it will make you sick. Population centers such as Kingston and Spanish Town are some of the most dangerous areas. Gang violence is also a problem, as illustrated earlier in the video. Gangs are often referred to as posses and are involved in drug and gun dealing. Due to the high levels of crime in the country, Prime Minister Andrew Holness declared a state of emergency in December 2022. He said of the measure, we have to ensure that a homicide rate and the level of violence that citizens experience on a daily basis does not get to the point where it threatens to collapse the state. This measure allowed the police to arrest people and search houses without a warrant, something that would never fly in the United States. The prison system is run by the Department of Correctional Services, which is under the Ministry of National Security and Justice. The mission statement for the department reads, We contribute to national security by securing, supervising, rehabilitating, and reintegrating offenders as productive and law-abiding citizens. Following an arrest, you will be transported to the Horizon Adult Remand Center, where you await trial. If sentenced to prison, there are six adult male institutions in the country. Interestingly, unlike U.S. prisons, Jamaica has a prison, New Broughton Sunset Adult Correctional Center, that is solely for men 55 and up, which in my opinion isn't a bad idea. The other facilities include the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center, St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center, Tamarin Farm Adult Correctional Center, Richmond Farm Adult Correctional Center, and Fort Augusta Adult Correctional Center. The most dangerous and violent prisons in the system are Tower Street and St. Catherine, where incidents of violence are far too common. Each of these prisons started as holding facilities during the slave trade. Tower Center has a capacity of 650 men, but has had over 1,700 at times. St. Catherine once held death row in the gallows for the prison system. The last execution in Jamaica was also conducted at St. Catherine. Jamaica has an incarceration rate of 137 per 100,000 people. 
Depending on the source, the U.S. incarcerated between 500 and 600 per 100,000. The lower rate in Jamaica is likely attributed to the lower capacity of its prison system, as they are often overcrowded and run down, with higher crime rates across the country. The total prison population sits around 3,500. Jamaican prisons are violent places, with murders occurring inside the walls. On November 13, 2020, Officer Jamel Westney was murdered at St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center by inmate Robert Thompson. He stabbed the officer multiple times. Westney would end up dying at a local hospital. He'd only been on the job for a few weeks. Just like in the US, officers are responsible for much of the contraband inside prisons. An officer was arrested in November 2022 for smuggling a cell phone and ganja into Tower Street Correctional Center. A report from the Guardian newspaper noted that prisoners can even buy machetes from guards to protect themselves. While the death penalty in Jamaica is technically still on the books, all inmates on death row have been commuted to life without parole. The last person executed in Jamaica was Nathan Foster, who was convicted of murder and hung in 1988. Jamaica has never used electrocution or lethal injection as a method of execution. With Jamaica being a popular tourist destination for Americans, there have been several instances where Americans have been locked up in Jamaican prisons and jails. In November 2022, eight Americans attempted to smuggle 38 pounds of cocaine off the island via a cruise ship. The eight would later plead guilty to possession of and taking steps to export cocaine they were released from the remand center with a fine of over $60,000 and no prison time, luckily for them. There is even an episode of the classic prison show, Locked Up Abroad, which featured Jamaican prisons. A couple is talked into smuggling drugs off the island, but is unfortunately arrested and spends time in Jamaican prisons. Before we move on to some of the infamous Jamaican inmates, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my new content. Joel Andem is another criminal gang leader and was once one of the most wanted men in Jamaica. From 2000 to 2004, it was believed that Andem committed over 20 murders. He was the leader of the Gideon Warriors and is now serving two 20-year sentences for his crimes. One police officer was quoted as saying, he would kill you if he looks at you and doesn't like you. Jamaica is known for its dance hall music. Vibes Cartel, a well-known Jamaican dance hall artist, was convicted in 2014 for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. He is serving a life sentence with a minimum of 35 years before parole eligibility. While in prison, he has continued to make music with his 2020 song Fever being certified gold. Even after his incarceration, Cartel has remained a prominent figure in the music scene of Jamaica. With its high crime rate and poor state of its prisons, Jamaica may have the worst prisons in the world. This was a chasing crime profile of the Jamaican prison system. Thanks for watching. As always, see you next time.